In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave me and forgive my sin. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we plead for reverence to your infinite mercy and seeking employ of your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ.
O Lord, since you never fail to help and govern those whom you do nurture in your steadfast fear and love, work in us a perpetual fear and love of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
So the servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house became angry and said to his servant, Go out quickly to the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in the poor and the crippled and the blind and the lame. And the servant said, Sir, what you commanded has been done, and still there is room. And the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges and compel the people to come in that my house may be filled. For I tell you, None of those men who were invited shall taste my banquet. This is the gospel of the Lord.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. One of the most striking proofs of the personal existence of Satan, which our times afford us, is found in the fact that he has so influenced the minds of the multitude in the reference to his existence and doings as to make them believe that he does not exist. William Ramsey, Ramsey theologian. Division, rancor, animosity, bitterness, enmity, hostility, hatred, vitriol, conflict. These are words we seemingly hear any given day. I say seemingly because we don't hear them outright. Instead, these words are synonymous with movements like BLM, Antifa, Nazism, homophobe, white privilege, racism. These words can be found in the arguments over marriage, economy, diplomacy, immigration, conservative, liberal, abortion, gender. These words, too, may remind us of broken relationships due to positions taken on any given volatile issue or position listed. And that seems to never end in today's news media, social media, commercials, sitcom, TV shows, sporting events, be it on your TV, your computer, or your smartphone. But of these words, the world also reaps separation, barriers, altars, and false idols. That pulls us away from our family, our neighbors, and sadly and most important, they can and do stand in the way of our relationship with Christ. It has become clear that most that more and more Christians are not going to church. Catechism is less important as is Bible study. This moves people to no longer be Christ-centered. Our relationship is no longer unity, but set apart by the unrighteous ideology disguised as, albeit false, a perceived righteous law. Are you or I, is Zion, Nampa, is America following the course of the world. A perceived law or morality that some use as a placeholder to show their relationship with God and I use a little Jesus. Or more precise, an idol. Make no mistake, this is by design. Just like Eve in the garden, the father of lies is active in our time. Why is it far easier to believe bad news than it is good news? Satan takes his lies and disguises them as righteousness. Okay, he doesn't want you to see that they're sin. No, he's going to disguise it each and every time. Christian values, ethics, word meanings are twisted by the modern secularism. We are, we are led to believe that we are wrong on issues of conscience, like abortion, marriage, boy or girl, transgenderism, race, feminism, masculinity, education, and sadly, some Christian denominations, the Word of God as written in the Bible. Today, the temples erected are just as exclusive as they were before Jesus, before and in Jesus' time. Your beliefs, your behaviors, your willingness to be to lawlessness, both civil and the Ten Commandments, are all factors required for entry. Moreover, you could be a participant in several. The lines between them are blurred and ever changing to the will of the sinful and fallen man. Are you willing to stand apart from your neighbor and, if need be, inflicting violence upon him or her to validate a perceived righteousness? Are we not, when in this state, suffering, burdened, oppressed, and persecuted? I open today's message with grace, mercy, and peace be to you. In contrast, we hear today the words and the message is outrage, jealousy, judgment, revenge be upon you. 
In all of this, the only consistent message being sent is division. As I spoke of in the beginning, only division, barriers, and separation are present at the altars. This is by design. The message today is in bold prints, flashed across headlines, breaking news, bombshells, huge, woke, scandal, race fact, racist fact check, and more. So to that, I give you this quote. I don't know where it came from, but I think it's worth repeating. Our eyes are two big liars implanted in our face. But where do we go? Who do we listen to? Where are we seated? Well, that brings us to Paul's beautiful and wonderful message today in the epistle reading, 13 through 22. This is part of the message in the beginning that's called One in Christ, going back to verse 11. Paul writes, therefore remember. Anytime we hear therefore remember, we probably better remember. Paul is pointing back to what he had just told the Ephesians. He's telling them and us today that we are fallen and we were once separated from God. Our old sinful nature, the old Adam, follows the prince of the power of air. When not Christ-centered, we are easily tempted and we are easily deceived. But here's the catch. Using law or some conceived righteousness can only cause separation. The focus is all wrong. Staying outraged at the abortion movement or towards gender dysphoria may in fact have just cause. And I only use these as two examples. But it only sows separation, animosity, bit bitterness, vitriol. Does it not put or grow enmity between us and our neighbor? As Paul says in chapter 2, are we not following the desires of the body and mind, and were by nature children of the Lord of wrath, like the rest of mankind? Does it not steal away our focus on Christ and what he has done for us and for the world? Don't get me wrong. I don't come along and condone the behaviors or beliefs that I listed a little while ago. But what I'm saying is that our focus is too centered on the outcome of the sin and not the follow-up to say, yes, you and I have sinned, but there is forgiveness. There is grace and there is peace. Stop looking and hearing the world. Rather, listen to Christ. Christ, the one who died on the cross for each and every one of us. We are joined into the one body, that body to which you were joined in holy baptism. A body that stands apart from the sin of the flesh and of this world. The body of Christ that puts all believers into a state of where we no longer need to have outrage, jealousy, judgment, or revenge. Because we are equal. We are forgiven. We are raised up with him seated us with him in the heavenly place in Christ Jesus. We are on the same playing field, equal in grace, equal in forgiveness, equal in peace. Because we are centered on Christ, and if we are centered on him, what else is there? Personally, I can't think of one thing because God's plan is perfect. Throughout the Bible, God's people have suffered. My example of Exodus 1 through 12, this we know that Pharaoh was afraid of the people of Israel. They had become many, and he was afraid that they would join his enemies. So Pharaoh afflicted them with heavy labor and burdens. But verse 12 says, But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied, and the more they spread abroad. As the world rails against his word, his law, his creation, we come to the full realization of who we are in Christ and what Christ has done for his church. We too will multiply and better yet, we will have eternal life, death, because death has been defeated. So to you, God's people, when we start our day, hopefully we all start with morning prayer and devotion. This is our journey. This is our journey we start every day. The journey to the other side of the curtain, where we no longer separated by the law or by sin, 
a reminder and confirmation that we are made anew in the promise of Christ. Whatever vision that was put in place to separate us from the Father was removed on the cross. Ephesians 2, 20-21, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. Brothers and sisters, in Christ, that whole structure includes you and I. Verse 22, in him you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. This word of Christ and the promise spoken can only bring to mind one in Christ. And that, my dear brothers and sisters, conveys grace, mercy, and peace. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.
ever stands for us as our own high priest. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful in the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Gracious, we receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, for to you alone we give all the glory, honor, and worship, Father and Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
It is funds to help support the ministry to immigrants and refugee communities by sharing the gospel with Muslims, Hindus, Sikhs, Buddhists, and others in our community to here, here in the U.S. Um, and this will replace our Mike Door offering for May and June. Um, I might also mention, because I'm sure it's going to come up, that next Sunday is Father's Day. The bottles. Make sure we bring those nice and full. Alright, I was hoping to get some reaction out of them. And uh, I wanted to mention briefly on the call, we did get the call documents out to Mr. Paul Cotter, uh, Vicar Paul Cotter. Um, he is uh, deliberating those. We had some initial questions. Those initial questions have been answered. Um, he's still in fact gathering mode. Um, he's taking this very seriously. Um, we have some additional questions that we need to answer. Um, and so we'll try and get those questions answered as well. Um, probably be reaching out to some of uh, the people here in the body, uh, school, uh, Sunday school, those types of things to get some of those questions uh, answered a little bit more uh, accurately. Um, let's see, George, you got anything? George, you got anything? <laughs> you did a great job. <laughs> um, so, I don't have any other announcements or announcements from the congregation. All right, hearing none, have a blessed day in the Lord. Um.